Hey, what's up everybody? Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. Hope everybody's staying safe and today we will be looking at a fresh new Northern Realms deck. Filled to the brim with mages, aptly named the Spellfire deck. It's a control deck with which you slowly build an army of mages to annihilate your opponent's units with. It focuses on dealing constant damage to your opponent's board, allowing you to take out key threats whenever you need to. Let's go over the cards and combos. The main card in this deck you should be using are the Centurion Spellweavers. These stylish sorcerers can deal 1 damage to any unit on order and gain a charge whenever you play a mage. The Spellweavers, get used to me saying that word, are the bread and butter in this deck and should always be set up first. Aside from the two already in the deck, you can use Queen Adalia to play another one while giving it a shield. You can use Operator to spawn one, which gives it two charges since Operator is also a mage. If you start in round one, you can also provide this Spellweaver with a shield using the Engineering Solution stratagem. Reinforcements can be used to copy and play one that is already on the field. And finally, Necromancy can be used to bring one back from the dead for a total of 6 possible Sintrian Spellweavers over the course of a game, which should be plenty. Aretuza Adepts are also a vital part of this deck. While on the range row, the Sorceresses in training can provide a unit with an extra charge every turn. Combine them with the Sintrian Spellweavers and you will constantly generate multiple charges you can use to deal damage. This is also where your leader ability stockpile comes in. Yes, stockpile, giving you even more charges whenever you need them. With this basic combo alone, you can consistently take out any 4 power unit your opponent plays to stop certain engine cards in their tracks before they even get started. In the first round, as we just said, you should try to put the spell weavers and adapts on the board indirectly using either Queen Adalia, the shield can help to keep them alive after the first turn, uh, operator, Necromancy or Reinforcements. Keep at least one of each available for the second or last round so you can keep zapping away. During the first round you can also supplement your damage with a Draugr Chain by using Forbidden Magic. Your spell weavers can soften up targets as you go. And Shile is also perfect if you need some extra damage to take something off the board. If there are no threatening targets available, store your charges and buff your Spellweavers with either the Banard Tutor or the Centurion Enchantress. Both of these also provide an extra charge. Every other card in this deck is built around the Spellweavers. Even your low provision units will provide them with extra charges as we just demonstrated. Don't overdo it in the first round however and keep the heavy hitters for the later rounds along with at least one more Spellweaver and Adept. Your setup for the final round ideally contains Dandelion. While on the range row, he boosts any unit on your side of the board by the amount of charges they gain. This not only doubles the value of your leader ability, but boosts all your spell weavers whenever another mage appears. Yennefer Conjurer provides extra board control by damaging all the highest enemy units by one each turn. You can again soften up the higher power units with your spell weavers to maximize damage. Koralti Heatwave is also included in this deck to take out the larger enemy units or more often than not a pesky scenario card. Heatwave on its own is perfect to counter double Masquerade Ball decks since it banishes the scenario from the game. Donimir can provide ample protection to set up your Spellweavers, Adepts, Dandelion and Yennefer, providing you with time more than anything else. Deathmold is another mage who fits in this deck really really well, boosting all of your mages by one in one go. Because of the abundance of mages in this deck, he can consistently provide 10 points or more. He also sets up Visigurd perfectly to gain a bunch of charges as well, which is usually enough to finish off any of the remaining threats on the board. Sabrina can deal massive row damage and if you have a spell weaver on the board, you can take her out immediately since she also counts as a mage you play, giving you an extra charge on your spell weavers. Philippa Blind Fury is our final power move, dealing 4 damage on a targeted unit, followed up with 3, 2 and 1 damage on random units. She can clean up any stragglers or weaken the board enough for the spellweavers to take out some more units. Remember, most of these cards also provide your spellweavers with extra charges to keep you going. Let's look at an example match to review the general flow of the deck. 
Here I'm facing an elven Deadeye deck. So we know we will be facing mostly elves with very little in the way of engine cards. These decks usually focus on getting as many units on the field as possible, so our goal will be to keep that number as low as possible. I go first, and since I have the Arblast in my hand, I go with him first, since he'll gain charges for every order unit I play, and he's not a mage. He's also well protected by the engineering solution, so it's a solid first start. My opponent plays a Smuggler, which is promptly taken out by the accrued charges and forbidden magic. I fully expect the Draugr to be taken out here, and the next card proves me right. No Draugr train for me here. Next up is our first Spellweaver, courtesy of Queen Adalia, with an extra shield for protection. My opponent seems hesitant, and because of my great hand, I decide to force things early by playing Dandelion. What I do here is overplaying on purpose, to get an early pass. My hand is so good, I felt like I could push in round 2. In most cases you will not want to do this, go for a long round 3 instead, but in this case we can counter pretty much anything. Nevertheless, we get the result we wanted, my opponent passes. Everything depends on the adapt now. If we can draw one, we push round two. If not, we wait until round three. And there we go, we actually get one. We set up with Donimir, a Spellweaver and an adept, giving us four charges in the Spellweaver, enough to take down the second smuggler that appears on the other side of the board. Next up, we get the expected scenario, which we promptly nuke with Korathi Heatwave. This is why I wanted to push round 2. We have all the tools we need. Don't forget to keep providing the Spellweaver with charges, especially since he's, he's still protected by Donimir. And our last setup card is Yennefer, after which we finally get what I was afraid of. Donimir gets purified, so our defenses are gone. Our setup is done, however, and in the next turn we reap the benefits of this. We play Sheila to damage Ida and use the Spellweaver to put every enemy unit to 3 power, after which we trigger Yennefer for 4 damage in total. At this point I should have probably taken out the Swordmaster to avoid the extra damage, but the amount of elves was spiraling out of control anyway, and we're not out of heavy hitters yet. We use Death Mold to bolster our defenses for 10 points in total, dish out some more damage to get 4 units back to 3 power, and trigger Yennefer again. Sadly, Vernocio comes in with a big whammy. My opponent uses their leader ability to maximize the amount of dead eyes, and we get hit with 12 damage across the board, taking out both Shile and sadly also the Spellweaver. We're not dead yet though, so we play Visigur to replace the Spellweaver and blast down Vernocio to 3 power, allowing Yennefer to hit for 4 damage again. Which was sadly her swan song since she gets taken down in the next turn by a second waylay. At this point I don't want to take the risk anymore. Having Philippa as a finisher in a short round is ideal and less risky than probably facing a juicy Isengrim if I were to play her now. So we pass. The final round gives us another Spellweaver and an Adept along with Necromancy, so this is looking pretty good. We set them up against two Vernocial Commandos, which are great engine cards, but with our Spellweaver we can easily take one out. Malena comes in next, taking out our Adept out of commission, but since I'm still expecting that Isengrim, I decide to play Philippa early, taking out both Malena and the remaining commando with a bit of help from the Spellweaver. Their next card proves me right, and using Necromancy we spawn our final Adept to provide the Spellweaver with two more charges, not enough to take down Isengrim, but enough to win us the game. The Rubiel comes in last, but it is just not enough to tip the scales. It was very close, but this game was perfect to show you how aggressive this deck can be. If you want to tinker with the deck a little bit, you could replace Yennefer Conjurer with Yennefer of Vengerberg to invest more in the Visigurd combo and to have a bit more uh, flexibility in how you deal with uh, swarm decks like the one we just saw. But I like this deck to be more focused as a pure control deck with lots of removal options. Mobilization is also a good leader ability to replace Stockpile with if you don't like it in this deck and would allow you to play two Spellweavers in the same turn. I prefer the constant drip feed that Stockpile gives me but your mileage may vary. Mobilization can provide the extra boost you need in the last round. 
And that's it for today. What do you think about the Spellfire deck? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. Because that's what we're here for after all. You can check out some of my other deck guides uh, from before such as the Harmonic Shuffle deck from last week or check out the video about Journey uh, giving you all the info you need about that new feature in the game. Any feedback on any of my videos is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at, at TrophyNut if you want to talk. That's T-R-O-V-N-U-T. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really, really appreciated as always. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye and stay safe.